Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, Dojo Nation, we have got a uh, really special guest today, uh, my attorney. <laughs> so this is Mark Potter of Potter Handy LLP. So Mark's firm uh, is the one handling my lawsuit against Uber and Lyft. And I got to say, Mark, I think we struck a nerve. Um, the YouTube video that I put out there uh, has nearly 25,000 views and uh, almost 300 comments. So it's uh, definitely got some <laughs> people talking, some people supportive, and some people have some serious questions about it, which we'll be able to get into uh, you know, as we talk today. So uh, welcome to the dojo, Mark. Thanks much for having me. Great, great. So um, tell me, uh, let's start off with, um, you know, why did you start the law firm, Potter Handy? Well, it, it, Potter's my last name, and Handy is my partner's last name. And uh, we've done litigation from the plaintiff's side since 1998. And we started it because we liked each other, and we liked uh, helping people out. Great, great. And then um, how did you get involved in, in driver's rights? You know, it's funny. I, um, I was a very early adopter uh, of Uber and Lyft, I used to hire people off of Craigslist to drive me to court. And, hmm. uh, here in, in San Diego, when I, uh, I handle cases throughout the state, when I was up in the Bay Area or in Sacramento, I'd put an ad in Craigslist for somebody to drive me because then I could get work done uh, as opposed to driving myself, I couldn't answer emails and stuff like that. Uh, it was a lift that I heard about first mm -hmm. when that came around, it was terrific. I, I thought it was the best thing ever and, uh, uh, much easier than placing an ad on Craigslist sure. for a driver and, uh, and the drivers were happy and, and, uh, I was happy. It, it just seemed uh, like it was the best thing. Mm -hmm. And um, then the first sign I got that not everybody was happy was uh, when the drivers in New York were protesting mm -hmm. uh, the, the their pay cuts. Right. And um, it it didn't it didn't make sense to me that. Um, that they were being treated so poorly. Uh, they, uh, I thought that they were, Uber and Lyft were charging a fair amount to, to the customers and, and the, uh, maybe better than fair. And, and the drivers seemed to be really happy. They were getting paid well. And, uh, it, it, it just didn't make sense that they were cutting the pay to these drivers. Right. And, um, I, I really, I really felt for these drivers cause I, 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 I didn't think that these protests were going to do any good, uh, other than, you know, brought awareness to me. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, and then it seemed like every chance that these, uh, companies could, they just kept turning the screws on the drivers. And, uh, by, uh, if, if a driver, uh, found a way to be profitable, they would turn the screws again and take that profit for themselves. And uh, let me just they, jump. Let me just jump here and here and here and say, yes, this is exactly what happened. 
I mean, I started four years ago, and I I could really see myself doing this, you know, for ten years. the The pay was good, uh, the bonuses were good, and then after a couple of years, it, it just was like I call it the you know death by a thousand cuts, where uh, suddenly my long trips, right? They cut the mileage rate, and my long trips where I would go to the airport, I was now making three to four dollars less. My my long trips to San Jose, ten dollars less. The bonuses required more of me, and they paid me less, and it just kept happening. Uh, destination filters, we used to have six, now we have two. Um, everything just got whittled and whittled and whittled down. And yes, you can still make money. And and if if you don't compare now to three or four years ago, you know people can be content. But I guarantee you, they're going to keep whittling it down. And and uh, I can just say, as a driver, it just had made me so angry that uh, this beautiful job that I loved so much had just turned into what it is today. There was no reason for them to do that, too. Uh, you know, especially Uber, they're, they have su- they had such mar- market dominance, and they, but they felt like they had. It seems like they had to compete with everything. You know, like they wanted to compete with subways and uh, any other alternative form of transportation. Uh, it um, it was. Um, a, they they didn't need to cut things so thin and make it uh, unprofitable for the drivers. Yeah, well, their well, their argument is going to be that we have to make a profit. We haven't made any money, and one of the big expenses that we can trim down, you know, is the drivers, and and that's a you know, and that's valid given that they're now a public company. But I still just it's just uh, it still <laughs> angers me to no end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In- and so the um, there, there's a lot of things you can't do anything about, uh, uh, but here they're doing it illegally. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are uh, lucky to be here in California where there's uh, more uh, progressive laws that, that uh, make it clear that drivers uh, are entitled to uh, – uh, certain protections that Uber and Lyft know they are violating, and they uh, they do it anyway, and they're illegally underpaying their drivers. Right, right, um, right. So, can you speak to, a little more to that? Um, you know, I, I I read just a few of the the comments that. Um, you know, people, uh, mostly haters, you know, put, put on YouTube and, and kind of the, uh, the one comment I heard a few times was, Hey, you know, you, you signed an agreement, you know, stop complaining about it. If you don't like it, just quit. And, um, you know, I, I've, I, I hear them, but I also feel I, I worked really, really hard for them. And had I been classified legally, uh, as an employee over the last four years, I would have earned a whole lot more money. And that's why I feel justified in, in pursuing this with your company. Well, that's exactly right. They, the, uh, they're they illegally paying, they're underpaying their drivers. And uh, so you have a contract that, uh, that has you agreeing to an illegal pay amount uh, that, that's, that's not okay. You, they have to, they have to comply with the same laws as every other employer in California. It's not fair for them to, uh, have a, uh, an agreement that allows them to pay less than what every other employer in the state has to pay. Uh, and every other employer has to pay, uh, unemployment insurance. Uh, disability insurance uh, and and minimum wage and uh, reimburse expenses for their for their employees and so I can't have a para- I can't ha- have a contract with a paralegal in my office that requires him or her to drive to the court and back and and me not compensate him or her for her the mileage right. that they uh, 
the expenses that they incurred for having driven there. Uh, I, I have to pay unemployment insurance. I, if, if they're, um, if they get injured, they're covered by workers comp and, uh, they, they can get disability if they, um, uh, become eligible for that because, I pay into all those things and every other employer, the restaurants and whatever business here in California, they all have to comply with these laws, but, uh, and, and they have to pay minimum wages. They have to pay overtime and, and, and what have you, all these things that provide, uh, meal breaks, paid, paid rest breaks. And uh, again, every employer has to do this. And so do they. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, interesting that um, uh, not not only has their policy impacted the drivers, but it's also impacted you know the citizens of the states, right? Because not only are they skirting the law to pay us less, but they're also avoiding a lot of uh, state taxes, which would ultimately benefit the citizenry of of California. Is that, that's correct, correct? Oh, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, because uh, these, these social safety nets are there uh, it, because they, they, they benefit society, not just the, the driver uh, who uh, gets injured uh, and, then, um, and then is, is out of work and they, they, um, uh, the, the whole society benefits because – then that person can pay their rent and the landlord uh, doesn't have to evict the person or, or it's not a burden on their family or, uh, or, or they have to go on some uh, assistance or something like that. It's, um, it's, it's uh, a benefit to everybody that, uh, that employers are paying into unemployment and disability and all those sorts of things. And that way society doesn't have to pick up those costs. For those of you drivers out there, you may be thinking, you know, I've I've definitely done a lot of driving in the last four years. I'd like to find out, you know, if, I, if I'm doing anything. Um, you can easily uh, go to therideshareguide.com and then forward slash damages. All right. And that, that'll, get, that'll take you right to uh, the damage calculator. And you can put some numbers in and... And kind of get an idea of uh, what's what's possible. Okay, um, so Mark, the other kind of kind of criticism I've received is, you know, it's all kind of bullshit. You're not going to make any money. You know, Uber and Lyft are kind of just too powerful, and you know, nothing's really going to come of it. Can you address that concern uh, that that some drivers have and probably are not moving forward because of that concern? Yes, the uh, the law is very powerfully on the driver's side. The these companies are getting away with it right now, just because they have arbitration clauses that are being enforced, mm -hmm. and so they they have to pursue the claim individually, not in a class action, and in arbitration. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of work, but that's all on me. I do that work. Right. So and, when you so uh, so for drivers, just so that, you know, people who aren't legally don't know all the terminology. So uh, by taking this action, uh, it's never going to go to a court in front of a judge, right? So arbitration. Can you just dis explain kind of what arbitration is, so we're all on the same page? Yeah, arbitration is similar to court, but it's a private court. Uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to run by the government, it's, you have a private, uh, arbitrator, uh, that is paid for by Uber or Lyft. And it's usually a retired judge or an attorney and they get assigned to the case and then they, and then it otherwise has a similar process to court, but it's private. Okay. It's, uh, the, the results from the arbitration are private, whereas in court they're public. You can look them up online. You can, uh, download the rulings. You can go to the hearings, uh, in arbitration. Uh, one of the reasons companies like arbitration is that it's private and confidential. Mm -hmm. And so you, you won't hear about the results from these arbitrations, uh, unless you're a party to the action. 
I see. And, and then you can't use that result in another action. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why every single one of them has to be relitigated. Whereas in court, if we got a, a judgment that could have issue preclusion in another case where they get held to be, uh, they, they lose an issue in court, you'd be able to use that in all the other cases. Right. And so each individual driver will have his own ar- arbitrator uh, and it'll all be done individually. That's right. Okay. And, and there's no jury. It's just some guy or some woman who's an ex-judge or an ex-something who uh, who's going to hear both sides, make a decision, and that's it. And no one's going to talk about it after it's done. That's right. <laughs> that's and basically no, correct. Yeah. And no right to appeal. Right. It's done. Okay. It's done. Yeah. Okay. But they, uh, uh, and so there, there are problems with arbitration, but the law is just so powerfully on the side of the drivers. Uh, Uber and Lyft are so clearly wrong on this legal issue that, uh, that drivers should pursue these claims. And they're very valuable claims. Uh, and it's not a quick process, though. You're not going to be able to file a claim and pay pay your rent next month with it. It's it's something that'll takes about the same amount of time as court. It'll probably take uh, a little longer than a year to mm-hmm. to get a ruling. But uh, I do all the work. Yeah. And uh, you just need uh, the client's help in getting some of the information to to prove up their claim. But otherwise. I uh, I fight it out with Uber or Lyft yeah. and take I, it all the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know for me when I you know first started talking to you, I looked at this as an opportunity, one, to just kind of vent some of my anger and frustration with, with Uber and Lyft, and two, what the heck, you know? Um, it's not money I'm counting, you know, if it, if it comes through and I, and I get a nice little payday, you know, in a year or so, great. Um, and that's how I kind of wrote it up for, for in the article was, you know, why not? You know, why not move forward? You, there's no cost up front. And, um, you know, if you get something great, if you don't, you don't. But um, why not? That's right. Uh, it's it's something that you're entitled to. And uh, and there's really no downside for, for you as a client. The, uh, I'm the one that takes all the risk, and uh, and that's how strongly I feel about it. But there's always risks with any litigation. Uh, but the risk is that you that you be no better off than you are right now. Uh, but the the upside is that you get compensated for all that you're entitled to under the law. Yeah, yeah. Um, another another uh, comment I read uh, sort of suggested that. You know, if Uber has to make everybody an employee or pay back pay, um, it's it's going to bankrupt Uber and Lyft. And uh, uh, can you speak to that? I mean, when I hear that, I think it's utterly ridiculous because, um, you know, paying the drivers, the statistics I've heard, and I've interviewed somebody about AB5, that if Uber and Lyft were paying uh, everybody, it would be about 30% more if they... Uh, were to, uh, you know, pay all the guarantees and the safeties that that they would pay to an employee would be approximately thirty percent more, and that's of that one expense that they've got, which is the drivers. And when you look at the uh, immense amount of revenue they have coming in, you know, it's a bit of a it's a hiccup, but it's certainly not something that would bankrupt Uber and Lyft. And in fact, it would probably force them to raise their rates a little bit for passengers, which I've which I. I think will not deter people from using Uber and Lyft. I just think Uber and Lyft are ridiculously cheap right now, uh, and they could stand for a little increase as they as they march towards profitability and taking care of their drivers properly. What say you? Well, you you said it all actually. They they would have to raise the rates a little bit, and right now their rates are ridiculously low. It, um, you know, they. Their rates are simply too low. They'd have to raise them a little bit, and then they'd have to uh, manage their business a little bit differently. Uh, they they could they could do it. They might not be able to be cheaper than riding uh, BART and, or other subways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, but they they could people people like using Uber and Lyft. 
and they'd be willing to pay a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, which would be a good thing for drivers too, because there's more revenue and more 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 money to pay the drivers as well. So uh, yeah, that's where you you don't have to drive ten or twelve hours to to make in, ends meet, where you you work eight hours, make the same amount as you were uh, working twelve hours, and uh, have a little bit more reasonable of a work life balance. Right, right, right. Uh, interesting. All right. Is there anything else, Mark, that we haven't covered in, in regards to drivers uh, taking action uh, against Uber and Lyft in California? Drivers who have driven, you know, a lot uh, in the last four years. You're you're the best prospects. And again, the link is uh, the rideshareguide.com forward slash damages. And you can just go there and click on that and then um, put in your information and you get a good estimate of, of what's possible. Anything we missed? You know, one other thing uh, that I noticed when uh, AB5 was coming up, there were some discussions on the rideshare guy about uh, being an employee versus an independent, independent contractor. And I, I think there was a false choice uh, in most drivers' minds because most drivers like the flexibility of being an independent contractor. And the the question was presented in a way uh, that I, I think most drivers had the feeling that if in order to be compensated as an employee, they'd give up all the they like about the being independent, right? Uh, all the independence of being an independent contractor, and I I think that's a false choice. I think, uh, and it's not really the issue here. The issue here is getting compensated uh, as you should, uh, as you're required to be under the law. But uh, these, uh, I, I think that Uber and Lyft can can easily pay their drivers as they're required to under the law at, uh, as employees. But the when the company that figures out how to do that and and still give the drivers independence uh, of choosing their schedules and stuff like that. Those, that's the company that the drivers are going to work for. Right. And, and so the competitive forces are still going to require these companies to give their, uh, their drivers a lot of flexibility, but still require them to, um, to reimburse them for the expenses and, um, and uh, uh, pay them, uh, pay them uh, for for all the time that they work, not right. just not just period three. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I, it's a, uh, I think it's just a PR campaign by Uber and Lyft because you know we, we as drivers on our apps we would get little notices like protect your flexibility, you know, click here, mm -hmm. you know, getting trying to get drivers to click that they're in support of. Opposition to AB five, and you know drivers. What do drivers know? You know, there's some of us who are really into the industry and really follow it. But if you're just a driver and you suddenly feel like you're you're going to lose your flexibility because of this AB five, um, that's that becomes the dominant mindset. Um, I did a podcast with uh, Rebecca Stack Martinez, who's with uh, Gig Workers Rising, and she said that's just. It's not that's not the case, you know. It would, because you're an employee, that doesn't that doesn't mean it has to change your your flexibility at all. Um, so you're right; it's a false choice. Um, basically, I look at the choice as: do you want an employee and get approximately thirty percent more pay, or be an independent contractor and, and get paid less? That's how I look at it. You know, I, I think that pay is. Uh... Uh, more than thirty percent more, though. Hmm. Uh, and maybe we should talk a little bit about the 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 reimbursed expenses that they're that uh, drivers, drivers are entitled to. Sure. And then and the difference in pay. Uh, the drivers are entitled to uh, mileage expense reimbursement mm -hmm. for every mile driven on behalf of this company on Uber, Lyft, or uh, whatever company they're working for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that includes, uh, there's periods one, two, and three uh, right. when they're waiting for 
uh, they have their app open and they're waiting for a, a ride request. When they're driving, they get a ride request, they accept it, and they're driving to pick up that person. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they're driving, that they pick up that person, they're driving them to their destination. They're entitled to mileage uh, reimbursement for all of those miles. And the, the current uh, mileage reimbursement under the IRS code is 58 cents a mile. And I think that that right there for a lot of drivers could huge. Almost, yeah, huge. That that's the huge one. Yeah. And then they're also entitled to their time, their wage for all the time that they spend. Right. Uh, right now, uh, drivers get paid just for period three. That's when they have uh, uh, a rider in their car taking them to the destination. Right. Uh, And what you do is you figure out what their wage is, and then you apply that wage to all the time uh, that would be, quote unquote, unproductive time. Uh, And they're entitled to their wage for all of that time. That includes when they're gassing up their car, uh, uh, washing their car, um, uh, or, or... Driving, Drive, driving, driving around, around, waiting for a ride, waiting for a uh, ping, right? Yeah, driving to pick up a uh, a ride that they uh, accepted. Yeah, they're entitled to be paid for all that time, and so I think that the drivers are. Uh, when you you put the your information in the damage calculator, uh, it'll give you it, the damage calculator is as accurate as the information you put into it. You you put your information there, and it'll tell you what you're if what you're entitled to under California law. And I think for most people, it uh, it's more than double their income. Right, exactly. It is. It it um, in my case, yeah, in my case, it was 150 um, percent. Yeah. And when you and when you look at it, it just makes sense. It uh, you know they didn't just make this stuff up. People deserve to be paid for the time they spend. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's minimum wage, there uh, reimbursement of expenses. These are all things that uh, companies should pay for, and it's things that every other company has to pay for. Right. And uh, there's no reason that these uh, these gig economy uh, companies uh, should be able to get away with uh, paying something less. Yeah, it's interesting how uh, I talked about this with Harry because I said. Wow, the the video is getting a, a lot of um, views, and uh, the comments. You know, it's getting quite a few negative comments. And I said, it's just funny how people will allow a company to, to just shit on them, like Uber and Lyft have. You know, cutting the rates and all of that, and people will still defend them. You know, it's it's interesting. It's uh, it's almost like an abusive relationship. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like. Snap out! The same thing, yeah. Snap out of it! You know you, you're not being treated well. Why not try and get what's coming to you? Uh, because if you worked for any other company, you would have. But you that's know, right. People are going to do what they're going to do, and haters are going to hate. Um, all, all, all we can do is share an opportunity, and if people take it, they take it. So, well, great, right. Mark. Um, this has been awesome. So I always ask uh, three questions, which I did not share with you. Um, ahead of time so that we, we, we get real legit, uh, organic answers. <laughs> okay. So, okay. uh, the first one is, uh, you're on a deserted Island and you can only watch one movie. What is your favorite movie of all time? Godfather. Excellent answer, Mark. Wow. That's, uh, that is my top number two. That's my number two answer. Um, my number one answer is uh, Apocaly- Apocalypse Now, but um, same I, director. Same director, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? The, my top two movies are by the same guy. Yeah. Um, Have you seen The Heart of Darkness? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, lo- I, 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 I love. I I almost that, like yeah. that better than Apocalypse Now. Yeah, it's pretty. It's amazing. How it's amazing. So so, Dojo Nation. We're talking about Francis Ford Coppola, and. He had already made The Godfather, and he was making this movie called Apocalypse Now about the Vietnam War, and he had to endure such stress, you know, in financing it, and people getting sick, and they had to leave and come back, and 
man, it's just remarkable that the thing got made and then that it was so good uh, was pretty great. Yeah. Um, Godfather, awesome. So I have that on, that's one of the movies, I have about 20 movies on my phone and The Godfather is definitely one of them. Just from the very beginning when he's holding the cat and and he's talking to the undertaker, you know, <laughs> it's great. Okay, uh, question number two, what pictures do you have on the wallpaper on your phone? Oh, boy, I have to look and see. You know, I just have the default. Just, just the default. Okay. All right. Um, it's always not, well, yeah, it's up to you. I, I, I like to uh, mix it up. And, and like right now I've got, uh, I've got the, uh, every year I make a vision board. I, I, I break out Photoshop and I, I make a vision board for the next year of things I want to accomplish. And that's, that's my current background. Well, I, I like that a lot. I'm, I'm big in setting goals and yeah. figuring out how to meet them. Yeah. Well, so let me just let me just say I've got the Maldives, I've got Florence, Italy, I've got Kyoto, Japan, and then I've got a picture of money and a and a gavel, and it says win lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I want to get it done this year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question, and then I'll let you go because I know you're busy. Um, when you walk into a room, um, what is your theme song? So if there's like a song for you that announces that Mark has entered the room. Um, what would that be? Uh, song. It's funny. I, I, I don't know that I have a theme song. I have a theme song for my wife walking into a room. Uh -huh. um, she's more worthy of a, a theme song than I am. <laughs> well, what kind of music um, do you like? What's a favorite song of yours? Um, well, yeah, I, like, I have a very uh, eclectic uh, taste. But I'm uh, kind of... 80s. I like uh, I like 80s music. So like you too, like uh, the Clash. Yeah, there's, there's a few good uh, you, favorite YouTube song or YouTube songs. And uh, which one? What's what's your if you had to pick one? I like Independence Day. Oh, that is a great song. Yeah, I still remember. Um, I still remember when I was driving to uh, I was driving to uh, Los Angeles in the 80s, and the Joshua Tree had just come out. Mm -hmm. And um, man, I, that that album just just changed my world. I just thought it was so great. And they've made some really good concert films too. I gotta say, I really haven't seen any of them. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's uh, there's some really good stuff. So great. All right, Mark, you have entered the dojo and served the drivers with some really valuable information. Um, I will, uh, in the show notes, I will put the link, but again, the link, if you're interested is, uh, the rideshareguy.com forward slash damages. And, uh, and then you can just put in your information and get a good idea and that'll get you connected with, uh, with, uh, Potter Handy and, uh, you can move forward like that. Anything else you want to throw out there, Mark? No. Thanks a lot, Jay. All right. Thank you, Mark, for entering the dojo. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.